Hello, my name is Abigail and welcome back to Polyglot Progress. Today I am here with my friend Natalia. Yes, hi. I make videos about learning Korean. And today <laughs> we asked you to submit your questions about languages, language learning, any yep. advice you needed for language learning. So that way you could get some answers and some advice and some help from two people who don't always agree on oh. language learning methods. <laughs> it's true, um, yeah, yeah. So you'll get a variety of responses. And variety is two. We also posted a little while ago now, like a month ago, some assumption videos on both of our channels. So if you'd like to go back and watch those, you can. But for now, we're going to Q &A. answer your questions. All right, Natalia, let me know. What do I do if I'm not making any progress and are my language learning methods wrong? I feel like most of the time when people feel that they're not making progress, it's just that they're expecting a big jump. I mean, it depends on what level you're at. If you're a beginner, then it might be a little bit more concerning, but if you're at an intermediate level, I'd say just keep going. You're probably yeah. not doing anything wrong. Yeah. I know for me as an intermediate, I've even talked to my italki teacher about like yeah. feeling like I'm not going anywhere. Like I know I'm obviously learning more words and more grammar, but I don't feel like I'm comprehending more or maybe able mm -hmm. to speak as much as like what whatever my expectations are even she has said that she's had a lot of students feel like that and then one day you just realize like oh my gosh i've improved so much because you're listening yeah. to some native content or something i would say depending on your situation like hold out if you're a beginner and you feel like you're not learning anything maybe try a different resource mm -hmm. or a different way of mm -hmm. studying but if you're intermediate i would say hang in there a little bit longer i feel like in both those situations you benefit from changing up what you're doing and changing your mm -hmm. routine or your resources because if you are just making slower progress because you're maybe going to like an advanced level or whatever focusing on whatever your weakest point is might True. help I'm sorry if you can hear whatever is happening outside what is happening outside i don't know <laughs> it's a moving truck Get welcome to the neighborhood or welcome out of the neighborhood welcome out <laughs> goodbye <lost>. from the neighborhood <laughs> that would be my advice is try something new and either it will teach you something new or you realize you're doing just fine or maybe you weren't using the right methods or whatever you'll learn something yeah either way yeah what is one thing you wish you knew before you started learning languages? How expensive it yes! is. Yes! <laughs> we talked about this off camera and we both were like, how expensive it is. Yeah, like you can obviously do cheaper things and yes. use cheaper resources. Yes. But I don't know. I just feel like there's such a financial commitment to it yeah. that people don't talk about. I'm also kind of glad I didn't know though. That's true. I, yeah, actually that's true. I would have liked to know, hey Natalia, it's going to be expensive. But I don't want a number. If you put a number on how much I've spent learning Korean, then I would have like not started. So I've been like, where's yeah. that money gonna come from? I don't have that kind of money. That's my answer actually. I would have liked to not have a number. I would have liked to know that there's a financial aspect to language learning, but you don't necessarily need to spend that money. But I would have liked to know in high school that like, it's okay if I progress a little slower in my speaking because I don't have access to certain resources that other people do. Like I wish I'd known for comparison yeah. because I think it was easy for me to be like, man, these other people are taking so many lessons and their speaking is so good. Mm -hmm. But like, I didn't have the financial means to do yeah, I didn't that. Either. I didn't start taking classes until a year and a half ago. And that's mm -hmm. because I started working so I could afford classes. Yeah. So like, I wish I'd known that like financial situations played into language learning in a way yeah. that like sometimes we don't talk about so it just looks like people are like better at it than you but they're not and like obviously you shouldn't compare yourself even if they <laughs> are like better than you at learning but like i think yeah. i compared myself in ways that i didn't need to because it was purely financial based one other thing i wish i'd known when i started out is just like related to language levels like mm -hmm. i wish i had known that it's not like so cut and dry and like i wish i'd known that it's not so just like you go from this to this to this it's yeah. like there's a lot of fluidity. You might know how to do things that a C1 speaker knows how to do and not know how to do things that yes. an A1 speaker knows how to do. Plus, like, I don't think that there's an end point now. I understand that, like, you can go from beginner to intermediate oftentimes faster than it takes you to go from intermediate to advanced. Yeah. Like, I wish I'd just known that it wasn't, like, one year doing this, one year doing this, one year doing this, yeah. and it's instead, like, a much more fluid and weird kind of process, which makes more sense, but I don't think that I had gone into it totally understanding that. 
podcast. <laughs> Speaking of which, do you think it's important to define language levels like A1, ETC, or in your case, like topic levels? Yes and no. It's kind of a difficult question mm -hmm. to answer. I feel like yes, because that helps you identify what resources would be best for you. Like I can't imagine textbook publishers not putting a level mm -hmm. on a textbook. Mm -hmm. You kind of need them and you need to know where you are based on like, I yeah. guess what your level is so you can get resources that are meant for you. Mm -hmm or talk to other like learners that are this, going through the same struggles mm -hmm. as you. I don't know, you don't need to know at the same yeah. time though. Like, yeah. I feel like they kind of put too much pressure on people. Yeah, yeah. At the same time, they're like, I've been a beginner for two years. I'm like, okay, but you're not the beginner you were two years ago. Yeah, though. that's a really good point. I've never so, thought of it phrased that way. That's yeah. a really good Cause point. Cause I, I don't know, I think of it as like a staircase and you're going up the stairs. Yeah. So you're not at the same spot. Yeah. I used to think of them as way more important than I do now. Now I don't even, I try not to express what my language level is even using the scale. Mm. Sometimes I have to because it's just easier to be like, this okay. is where I'm at or whatever. But like I in general have steered away from that because I realized just how fluid it is. Like mm -hmm. there are things that I am realizing that I can talk about in German that are like a C1 type like C1 speakers should be able to do this. And then yeah. there are other things like that I don't know how to do that are like beginner topics because I just jumped over them. But, like for some reason, kitchen things, like <laughs> baking and cooking vocabulary and like I don't pot know and pan, I always skip over for some reason. It's so it's like, I can talk to you about global warming, but like not <gasps> yeah. what I do in the I, kitchen. I know for grammar, sometimes my italki teacher will like laugh at me. Like not in a malicious <laughs> way, let's clarify that right here right now. But like she'll laugh because she'll show like a grammar point that I'm supposed to learn today. And I'll be like, I already know that. Mm -hmm. Like I've known it for a long time. I don't know why it's yeah. showing up in this upper level textbook. But then she'll correct my grammar and be like, this is level one. Like, this yeah, is, yeah, yeah. she'll be like, okay, let's learn this grammar point because it's like level one or level two. Yeah, so I should yeah. have learned it years ago. Yeah. I just never did. I mean, granted, yeah. I was self-studying beginner. So it makes sense that like there's some yeah. gaps there. Yeah, that's like the other part of it is I feel like now I rely less on levels because like I have realized that also there's like no end point really. Like you're always kind of gonna be learning things. Mm -hmm. There are things that I don't know in English, mm -hmm. but at the same time, I think I've realized how helpful they can be in other ways, even beyond looking for textbooks. Like I think one thing I've been kind of looking at recently is like, so what kind of things should I be able to talk about at this mm -hmm. point? Like what mm -hmm. topics mm -hmm. would come up on a, if I'm at a B2 level, what would come up on a C1? CFR exam mm -hmm. and kind of using those as guidelines for new topics to study because sometimes I'm at least for me I'm like I don't know what to do now like I can keep reading books mm -hmm. yeah. but like if I want to make specific progress and structured progress I don't know what to work on right now so I think they're helpful but also not needed if you don't want to use them yeah and I think the community adds a lot of pressure into yeah. having a level. Just because I know I get a lot of questions being like, what level are you? Fun times. Love that. <laughs> okay, so the next question is kind of like a situation. Okay. I'm motivated to study when I'm busy, work slash school, but I don't want to when I'm free. Help. I have experienced this so many times. I don't know if you like heavily feel this as well, but I have gotten that no. so much. No. No. <laughs> no. No. I think part of it, you have to figure out why you're feeling motivated when you're busy and why you're not when you're not and if it's burnout then addressing that will help if yeah. it's that you are more so looking for distraction when you're busy oh and so you true want that's to what i was things, thinking but you don't actually want to do that when you have time like maybe discipline is the answer yeah. maybe i was gonna say maybe like create some mm -hmm. kind of routine like i'm not saying like you do every day kind of like yeah. routine but like hey every I don't know, Thursday. Yeah, yeah. Like at this time I'm gonna study. Yeah. I mean, you'll have to test it out to see how it actually goes for you. Mm -hmm. But for me, I have like a, not like a super set routine, but like a flexible one. Yeah. And that's how I study even when I'm not motivated. So I'd say figuring out why is the answer. Cause if you put that structure in, but it's burnout, then you're just gonna that's burn not gonna out work. more. That is not gonna but work. But like, if yeah. it's not burnout, then like telling yourself like, fine, I'll just do nothing is also not yeah. gonna help address that. So like definitely do some introspection, figure out what's going on, and then that will give you your answer. How long do you wait before telling people you're learning a language? So I know that you're only studying Korean, yeah. and you've only been studying Korean for yeah. a long time. But like, if you were to start learning a new language, how long would you wait before you started telling people? People in real life, I don't tell people I'm learning languages. Unless it comes up in conversation, yeah. I don't see the need to bring it up. I mean, but I'm a very 
introverted person, so I'm not gonna just yeah. offer up information. <sighs> I get in trouble for this. I don't offer up information <laughs> unless you say something that makes me think that you'll either want to talk about this or that we have something in common. Yeah. So, that makes sense. never. When would you tell your YouTube, YouTube? audience? Probably, I wanna say never. <laughs> <laughs> Never. She could be learning another language right no. now. <laughs> I wouldn't want to bring it up mm -hmm. because I want my channel to be focused on Korean, especially mm -hmm. since I plan on moving to Korea. And I know from experience that whenever I start studying another language, you guys don't forget. And I, get, <laughs> I will get questions about it years later being like, oh, are you still studying X, Y, Z language? I'm like, no, that was just like a short little yeah. like study thing for like a tri upcoming trip, for mm -hmm. example. Like mm -hmm. I like to study the language of the whatever mm -hmm. country I'm going mm -hmm. to. But it's not like I want to be fluent or I have some kind of goal. It's just like, I want to be a little bit more aware, be able to be a little polite, you know, when yeah. I'm traveling around. I can also see myself mentioning it in a vlog, but like, oh yeah, yeah, I'm taking this class. But at the same time, I don't know if I'm gonna do that. Just because I don't want people to think I'm studying hard mm -hmm. for that language mm -hmm. and then ask me for recommendations or yeah. something yeah. and then me not be able to help them when they have questions, so. Wait, here's a hypothetical. Oh, what no. if? <laughs> oh no. <laughs> what if you started learning another language and then you decided you wanted to move to that country after living in Korea? Would you oh, then bring it up or would you continue to not? It's a big hypothetical. <laughs> I don't know. I think it would depend on the direction I wanted to go with my channel. Because if my channel was then going to switch to like, okay, I moved to Germany, now I'm going to make like German yeah. content, then I'd be like, yeah, I've been studying German. Yeah, I know. Kick mm -hmm, me. Mm -hmm. It's fine. Mm -hmm. But if I wanted to keep it like, okay, here are my Korean studies or like mm -hmm. something about related to Korea, which I think would be really hard if you're not living there anymore. Yeah. But if I wanted to keep it like that, I wouldn't even mention that I speak German. I would probably tell like, if I met a subscriber in real life in Germany or something mm -hmm, that I'd be mm -hmm. like, oh yeah, like I speak German, but, which I, I don't, this is hypothetical. You'd be speaking German like to a shop owner and then someone would be like, Natalia? And you'd be like, hey, and they'd be like, were you just speaking German? And you'd no. be like, no, it was Korean. No. I think for me, I don't know. I feel like I would say it pretty early on since polyglot progress is like my okay, progress yeah. with languages. So I feel yeah. like it makes sense to, from a beginner stage, say it. And I feel like even if I'm dabbling, like, I feel like because I do like monthly vlogs and things like mm -hmm. that, it wouldn't be out of the blue for me to say like, I'm dabbling in this and then be like, mm -hmm. I'm not really doing that anymore. But I definitely have had <laughs> the thought and desire of maybe someday like having a language that I just keep to myself. I think it might be nice eventually to have one that I don't have any sort of pressure with progressing, don't have any pressure with sharing, but I think it would be really hard to like not yeah. explain why my progress has looked one way in other languages without saying yeah. that Part would, of it's because my time is being consumed by yeah. something else. I feel like that would be hard for you because you use your progress updates for yourself later. Yeah, I think I would have to, honestly, I think the only way I could do it because I post progress updates, not necessarily even for other people, but yeah. for myself, yeah. I would have to keep a log of my own progress. That's what I was thinking. But the hard part is that I also get feedback on my diaries. Like, that's part of the part that helps mm -hmm. me with them is not only because I look back, but also, like, I post them and then people are like, you're using this grammar structure wrong, you oh. used this word wrong. The word you're looking for is this one That's or like your pronunciation was a little off here here's one way to help you so like know. if i didn't have that feedback just have to put mon more money into italki i guess what is your language pet peeve i think for me it's when people comment on other people's language learning style oh okay yeah that's my pet peeve <laughs> i know we've talked about this several times and in the assumptions videos that we did but i really dislike it mm -hmm. when people assume too. that something that didn't work for them automatically isn't gonna work for somebody else like yeah. for me with tech i study with textbooks a lot and it's mm -hmm. really worked out well for me and Same. I love textbooks. Yeah, it bothers me when people come to my channel and be like there's no way you're gonna learn any Korean yeah, with yeah. textbooks. I'm like okay then how do you explain my level of Korean? Yeah I actually that'll be my pet peeve. I find it like rude. Like obviously giving people advice is one thing but I think that being like you're doing this wrong here's how to do it. It's like I didn't ask for that advice and also this video is me telling you what worked for me so yeah. I don't need you coming and telling me that I'm incorrect about no, you're my lying. experience. I guess another pet peeve would be like, I don't see it super often anymore, but I feel like when I started Polyglot Progress, I saw a lot of videos on YouTube that were like, here is the way to learn a language. And they would very much so like kind of knock down other methods and say oh, that yeah. like, this is the way. And like, it's for the same reason I don't like it, I think language learning is such a personal thing. And so yeah. even like while I offer advice and while I talk about how I learn languages, they're because I feel like I found what worked for me by watching other people talk mm -hmm. about what works for them. But like with that, I've also tried a lot of stuff that 
that's really not worked at all. My pet peeve would be people saying like, this is the way to do it, whether it's in a rude way or in kind of a helpful way, but like but, saying that that's the way. Also, it I don't think there is a the way. It depends on what your goal is too. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. we all have different like I desires. Have, yeah, I have videos where I'm talking about preparing specifically for the Korean language exam. Mm -hmm. And I got people telling me like, oh, you need to watch more Korean dramas. I'm like, no. Cause they would say like, oh, that textbook that you're using that's like academic Korean, which for the level that I was aiming for on the topic, mm -hmm. it's academic Korean. Mm -hmm. Like, e that's not how we talk. Like I had some Korean people trying to correct mm -hmm. me too. They're like, that's not how we talk. You should watch dramas or you should do X, Y, Z. I'm like, that doesn't make sense for what I'm trying to improve. Yeah. Especially since my goal is to go to grad school in Korea. I was mm -hmm. like, I don't need dramas. Like, yeah. does it help? Yes, but that's not the main focus that I have right now. It's learning academic Korean for grad school. I've talked a lot about reading mm -hmm. and a lot of people have been like, you really need to prioritize speaking. And it's like, but I love Reading. reading. Part yeah. of like a good portion of why I learn languages is so I can read books. So like if I'm putting more emphasis into reading than speaking or like whatever, like it's okay because my goal is literally to read, read books. People have different goals. Like I yeah. totally get if you hate reading, like don't focus on it. Like yeah. I think that's fine. You can have a really weak reading level in a language if you don't want to read ever. How do you revise grammar concepts? Do you use flashcards, workbooks, etc.? <laughs> It's a very loaded question. <laughs> Sorry. I wouldn't have expected this one to be the loaded question. Yeah, I, really? I feel like this is a loaded question. There's several ways that I like to learn grammar in general. I guess the first way that I learn grammar is through italki because that's my main resource right mm -hmm. now is italki. So I'll go through my teacher's explanation. I don't think that I've learned the structure just because my teacher explained it to me. Oh yeah. So yeah. I'll in the process of learning, it's like her explanation, then I'll do my workbook exercises because we mm -hmm. are learning with a textbook. I'll read the textbook's explanation. And then usually if it's still a little difficult, I will go to YouTube and watch videos because there are several channels that are for mm -hmm. Korean grammar that are in Korean, like taught in Korean. So I'll watch those. And that's usually like one study session. And then later um, in my next italki like, class will review. Review mm -hmm. meaning she'll ask me to make certain like sentences mm -hmm. or we'll do a different activity that's in the book that's based on speaking so I have to do it right then and there. And then if, then if I still need like some kind of additional review then I'll either go find blog posts, I'll review one of my grammar textbooks because I do have grammar textbooks. I think most of my review just comes from using it with my italki teacher honestly. That and changing up the media. Like one is like the teacher's telling me, the other one is I'm reading the explanations and the other yeah. is I'm listening. And then of course trying to use it myself. Like I always try to use it, whether it's on like Hello Talk mm -hmm. or like texting a friend or just in a diary. The best review is literally just using it. I can pretty much only learn grammar through doing it. So like drills, honestly. Like I, I write stuff down when I learn it for grammar points because that helps me as well. Like the act mm -hmm. of writing out when to use it and why to use it. And then it is just using Usage. it over and over and over and over again. Yeah. Honestly, I don't even take notes for grammar. Mm -hmm. I just go with like the explanation that's in my textbook. If my teacher says something or one of mm -hmm. the videos I watch says something, I add it there in the textbook because mm -hmm. there's a lot of like white empty space. So I'll just add it there. So basically use it. Yeah. If you could change your mother tongue, would you and why? Hmm. We talked about this earlier. Mm -hmm. I don't know because I know that like objectively speaking English is very important for my life and for the work that I do. It would be really ignorant for me to not <laughs> address <laughs> that like English is a really important language to work in that industry because Hollywood is such a like hub for that. So even internationally, like English is used quite frequently. It's yeah. regarded really highly at the very least. So like it probably, if I had a different mother tongue, I probably would still end up learning English. Yeah. But I don't like English <laughs> yeah, that we, much. We said, yeah. Like, and mean. it's it's not just a like, I'm so familiar with it that it's boring or whatever. Like, who knows? Maybe if I had grown up speaking something else, I would think that English is really cool, especially since it is so prevalent in yeah. TV and movies. But like, I linguistically am less interested in it than other languages. I don't objectively like the way it sounds very much. So like, mm -hmm. I'm kind of, I, I used to wish that I had a different language as my mother tongue, but oh. I think because I don't like English that much. <laughs> oh. And so now that I have thought about all of that, I think I actually am glad that English is 
my mother tongue yeah. because I, I don't think I would have had as much of an interest to learn it if I spoke a different yeah. language. But I am glad that I speak it because of the opportunities that it gives me and because of the people that I've met mm -hmm. through speaking English and all of that kind of thing. If I were to change my mother tongue, it would only go to Spanish mm -hmm. and that's assuming I was gonna learn English like a native anyway. Meaning yeah. maybe I learned only spoke Spanish in my home until I went to kindergarten. Like if there was no guarantee that I was still gonna learn English to a native level, like not make this, I mean, I make mistakes all the time, but they're like native mistakes. Yeah. Then I wouldn't do it. I'm pretty much for the same reasons. Like I would end up having to learn English anyway mm -hmm. because of opportunities both in the US and abroad. Mm -hmm. And just traveling is so much easier when you speak English. Like I know this sounds silly, but like when I was in Korea, I could go anywhere and just be like, even if I didn't know the Korean words for something, I'd be like, I speak English. Mm. And somebody there was gonna speak English. While it's like, great, it can be a crutch, but... I've never actually had that experience because... Really? Yeah, because just the places I've traveled, like I guess in Canada, yeah, I spoke English, but like that was... Canada. Uh, not <laughs> like Canada. a super unexpected thing. I guess maybe I could have spoken English, but I didn't in France. Yeah. I spoke French the whole time I was there. And then when I was in Germany, the family I stayed with did not speak English. Okay. I had to speak German and actually I found that my German was not a very good level. So <laughs> I struggled a lot with that. And then yeah. the second family that I stayed with in Germany had a much more comprehensible accent to my little baby German <laughs> ears. Um, and I had an easier time and like I had to talk to a doctor in German who also didn't speak English because mm. I got sick um, yeah. in Germany. So like I didn't have that experience. And when I went to Benin, people didn't really speak English. Mm. There were some people that spoke an okay level of English, but yeah. I spoke French the whole time other than interpreting to other people from my school who had gone. So like I haven't had the experience of going to another country and then oh. just speaking English at all. But I do know that it would be possible maybe if I traveled to certain places, but all my experiences have actually been that I have needed French or German. Yeah, I think the only time I've gone somewhere that did, they didn't have like English speakers super I don't want to say available, but yeah. like very obvious presence was when I went to China. Interesting. I had to speak Chinese the whole time. Mm -hmm. So... How do you deal with people who tell you you should have learned X language instead? I already told Abigail this, <laughs> but I, I roll my eyes and then I delete the comment. <laughs> what if it's in person? I kind of just look at the delete funny. Delete them. <laughs> <laughs> delete. I'm not shy about it anymore. Mm -hmm. Like usually when somebody says that, I think that they're just really ignorant. Yeah. So I just look at them I'm like... Yeah. Okay. They can tell that they just rubbed me the wrong way, like mm -hmm. majorly. Yeah. yeah. Pretty much m my patience for that has um, been exceeded. And mm -hmm. so I'm just mm -hmm. very blunt about how I don't like what they just said. I feel like studying French in school and then majoring in French, people were always like, you should learn Spanish instead because you live in the US and everyone speaks Spanish. And it was like, I want to learn French. Also, like, I feel like a lot of those comments are just so ignorant because it's people like, so much of the world speaks Spanish. Ignoring the fact that like so much of the African continent is full of countries that speak French. Mm -hmm. There are French speakers in the Caribbean. There mm -hmm. are French speakers all over. It's not just France and mm -hmm. not just France mm -hmm. and Canada, which I feel like is what people think. Mm -hmm. Like they're like, it's France. Why would you do it? Yeah. But like if we're going purely off of usefulness, which I think is That's stupid where, anyway, yeah. like French is pretty useful language. Yeah. Um, so I feel like going through all of that, I kind of stopped caring about those comments because like a lot of it is just ignorant of like, that's not a yeah. useful language, ignoring the use that it can it's have. Like, okay. Yeah, I think they come from the perspective of like this language would be more useful, but I don't think they take into account like the happiness that certain yeah. language brings us or the connection we might or, have like, with that Yeah, language. the usefulness that you have. Like, like, I feel like someone could be like, Natalia, you should learn this language. It's more useful than Korean, but it's like, it's not for you. If you want to move to Korea, Korean is the most <laughs> objectively the most useful for you. Yeah. Like, if you think that, then maybe you should you learn do that it. language. Yeah. Because if you have that much of a commitment to all the reasons it's a great language to learn, like, it sounds like you're really interested in it. But I might not have those same reasons. Yeah. Oh, I'm gonna keep learning the languages I want. <laughs> Last one. I failed my Spanish test, so I stopped paying for classes. Now I have no motivation. So in 2018, I took the Korean proficiency test thinking that I would get like an upper intermediate score and ended up completely failing it. I guess in the video that I talked about that, I mentioned that I thought about quitting YouTube and not studying Korean ever again, just being like peacing out basically. <laughs> I think I just needed a break. 
I needed mm -hmm. time to process the fact that I failed the exam. And I remember there was actually a really good like timing from my friend. I got my scores and that same like day or week, I got a postcard from my friend in Korea and it was written in all Korean and I could understand the whole postcard and she wrote a lot and I didn't have to look up anything. Like I understood everything she was saying mm -hmm. and it made me realize like, I speak Korean. Yeah. Like why am I so upset? Like I just yeah. needed time to like, I guess mourn what I like that I didn't reach this level of fluency that I thought I had or that yeah. I was aiming for. Yeah. I mean, I also had to process the fact that I didn't study for that exam correctly. It was very, yeah. I should have studied for the exam mm -hmm. and I didn't. I went in thinking like, oh, if I know Korean, that's good enough. And yeah. it wasn't. So yeah, I would just say take a break. It's okay to be upset. Mm -hmm. And I think it's fine that you canceled your classes or stopped getting, taking classes because mm -hmm. you just need time to break. Mm -hmm. I think when you're starting to miss Spanish again, which will happen, you can start <laughs> again. I was gonna point out the the test aspect too. Sometimes it's not even your language level. Yeah. Like only you can know that. Like maybe it was that you weren't at the Spanish level you needed to be to pass. Yeah. But I think with tests, it can be really hard because sometimes it's just the examination. Either you didn't mm -hmm. know enough about that exam or prepare for that exam or like, yeah. I know that I don't perform as well on tests than I would if I like just had to do something mm -hmm. in a subject whether that's a language or literally anything else just because tests stress me out I get so anxious and I yeah. blank on things or I make mistakes or I'm just rushed so like sometimes it can be that and so definitely taking a break is good but I also I experienced this past year I took an italki lesson that went really badly partly because of my level but that. also like the lesson went poorly for reasons other than just my language and I yeah. I could sense that after the lesson mm -hmm. but at the same time I couldn't help but feel like I failed I spoke German poorly I didn't speak the way I wanted to but like what I did was I booked myself another lesson for like two days later with a different tutor and just tried to instead of doing what I typically do which is like hide away and be like I just won't do that thing anymore because I can't do it well yeah. focus instead on progressing and it made me feel a lot better the next lesson went really really well and just yeah. like made me feel a lot more optimistic and encouraged to keep studying I think a lot of it again like the other question you have to kind of reflect and see what it is for you that's causing that but like sometimes a break is the right move and sometimes the opposite is the right move to kind of show yourself why you love Spanish and mm -hmm. show yourself that it was the exam that was the problem and mm -hmm. not you personally and see just like all the things that you are capable yeah. of yeah exactly I would look back on what you can do in mm -hmm. Spanish because that's a reason enough to keep going yeah that's sort of like what it was for you too reading yeah. the postcards so maybe yeah. like find something fun even like watch a movie instead of taking a class or like read a book even if it's like a kid's book just like to remind yourself of what you are mm -hmm. able to do and like why you like spanish so that has been our questions and answers and advice we are filming another one of these on natalia's channel so if you want to go watch it you can click up in the card or down in the box um, and like I said, we also made assumptions videos that you can go and watch. Yep. Other than that, I will see you next Wednesday and remember practice makes progress. <laughs>